Uh, my name's Stephen Grant, I'm from Brighton, and no, I'm not, but a lot of my friends are, so let's get that out of the way. <laughs> yeah, sure you were trying to work that one out for yourself, that's absolutely fine. Fully aware of the fact that I am from the gay capital of the UK. Uh, you may not also know I'm also from the environmentalist capital of the UK. Genuinely, it's Brighton's rammed, uh, full of cyclists, thinking green, or at least thinking that's the colour of every traffic light they reach. And, uh, you know, the sort of people who have a go at me uh, for mixing my recycling and my normal rubbish together, or bincest, as I call it. You shouldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. We all know people like this, don't you? The sort of people who put signatures on their own private email saying things like, stop. Think, do you need to print this off? Yeah. And do you know what upsets me about that? When I do need to print it off, that's the line that appears on a second bloody page, right? <laughs> yeah. So we are. We are in the midst of the worst recession, aren't we? And yet, yeah, doesn't seem to make any difference, does it? No, especially in the South. The South, we've got no manufacturing, do we? We've got, we don't make anything. All we seem to make is documentaries about how we don't make anything. That is it, isn't it? <laughs> Just got interviewers out in force going, are you poor? Are you poor? Tell me, are you poor? I saw one recently, they stopped this woman outside her house and they said, how have you been affected by the global recession? And she said, well, I've got six children, so things are really tight. And I thought, well, they can't be that tight, surely. I... <laughs> I'm guessing after the fifth one, at most it tickles. I. Uh... We can laugh about it, but it's serious. Has anyone recently tried getting a mortgage? How difficult is that now? I wrote a letter to my bank. I got a letter back saying that my job was not conducive to good credit planning, and I had a history of financial decision-making errors, okay? And just to make it slightly more upsetting, they wrapped this letter around a flyer saying, would you like to personalise the front of your credit card with a favourite photo for £10? which I think would be poor financial decision-making, OK? <laughs> but I thought, well, you've asked, I'll take you up on your offer, and I now have a new credit card, ladies and gentlemen. This is generally my credit card. I show the people down here. It's got a microchip and the hologram and the signature. And I know you can't all see it clearly, but if I hold it up, you'll see that my credit card does now sport a new photo, and that is a one-to-one -one silhouette of my own cock, ladies and gentlemen. And... <laughs> And it's genuinely my credit card. I use that every day, and I did that so that now, when I go to a cash machine and put it in, I'm fucking them. <laughs> so, I love that. That applause is half people going, that's a very clever joke, and the other half are men going, how do I get my cock on a credit card? And, the trick is, if you're curious, take the picture from the side. If you do it from the top, it looks like a badly cut pipe. That's all I can say. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love it. Look at the age range of people in here right now. Some of them are talking about that. Some people probably not entirely sure about the whole mortgage thing. Looking right around. This, this lady here as well in the second row. Hello. Hi, you seem quite young. Do you mind me asking how old are you? 26. 26. You say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll never get a mortgage. No, it's, um, it's not going to happen. You know, and it's fair enough, you know, I mean, I'm going to give you a hard time about that. I'm uh, quite jealous of you being in your mid-twenties, all that enthusiasm. You probably think old age is miles away. Well, let me tell you on behalf of me, these people here, and quite a few people in this room right now, it is round the corner, OK? <laughs> and the reason why you need to know it, because right now, in your head, a calendar year goes so slowly, you're probably thinking, you know what, even 40, I don't have to think about that. But let me tell you, when you hit the magic 30, your perception of time will go through the window, right? Because I remember 26, I got loads of stuff done. I remember 17. In that one year, I went into railing, got my first car, got my first girlfriend, got my first serious job. Last year, I think I went on a picnic. Do you see what I'm saying? Where'd the time go? Who remembers 12, ladies and gentlemen? How long did 12 take? December the 23rd, two days before Christmas, trying to make time go quicker? How hard was that? I'd look at my watch, run upstairs, colour something in, go in the garden, kick a ball around, come back, make a sandwich, eat it, put the telly on, watch a programme, look at my watch. Ten minutes have passed! <laughs> Ten minutes, two days, that'll take forever. Now I have a lion, I wake up, I'm 39, right, you know? <laughs> And bizarrely, the only time when time goes slowly for me now is when I try and do what you 20-somethings do and go clubbing. And that 
is when time drags, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my word, and if I can't find a chair, it goes doubly slow. I... <laughs> Not picking on you, jealous, you realise that? Wish I was back in my early 20s. It's me and my wife are trying for a baby right now. Yeah, and some of you out there thinking, yeah, sex on tap. Well, if you're a bloke and you're thinking that, you haven't tried it yet, have you? <laughs> it is the shittest sex you will ever have in your life. <laughs> Terrible, there's no cuddling, there's no affection, just a lot of hurry up, master chefs on, you know, it's uh... <laughs> And if you're still thinking, well, at least you get to have sex every day. No, no, I'm 38. I've got to buffer it up to get the consistency right. For all you 20-something, sex for you is like one of those plastic squirty ketchup bottles, isn't it? You know? Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Me, it's like a five-year-old glass ketchup bottle, right? I've got to wait forever. <laughs> My wife's going, it's just not going to happen. You're going to have to get a knife in there. I mean, it... <laughs> You know what? Probably my fault, because I cycle everywhere. No, I found that out. If you cycle, an hour in the saddle a day will kill 50% of your sperm. Seriously, if you're trying for a baby, don't cycle. What I wanted to know is where was that information when I was in my early 20s? When I was back then having sex for fun, you know? In a girl and she's all going, oh, Stephen, don't come with me. You go, all right, love, it's okay, I cycled here. You know it? <laughs> Seriously, it turns out I've actually got what's known non-dominant sperm. That's what I've got. It genuinely exists. What it means is the sperm won't go into the egg if another sperm is trying to go into the egg. Basically, I'm stuck in an infinite loop of British politeness. Okay? <laughs> after you. <laughs> no, I can't. After you. <laughs> but I insist. After you. No, I simply shouldn't. After you. <laughs> The British with their politeness. Opposite end of the spectrum, do we have any Australians in? Yeah! Gentlemen there, good to have you here, sir. No, genuinely. Think it's gonna be Aussie bashing? No, no, no. Been to your country, love your country, love your people, love your mentality, never going back. Because <laughs> what you've done to the English language is inexcusable, sir. Inexcusable, right? It seems like every time you stumble across a word you're not particularly happy about, you go, nah, cut in half. Put an O on it, right? You, you abbreviate the hell out of our beautiful English language, right? My name is Stephen. I was born Stephen. I was brought up Stephen. For all of my friends and family, I am Stephen. The second I stepped off the plane in Australia, what was my name? Stephen. Of course it was, right? I, I've no idea who this bloke is. I've never met him. I'm like, seriously, after three days there, I'd overheard a conversation with this bloke going, yeah, mate, I'm giving a prezzo at the expo after the demo, and then I'm meeting up with Jono and Robbo. He's stopping off the bottle because he's a bit of an outco since he went tropo when he lost his job as a journo. Absolutely devo. <laughs> Devoed. Devoed. That took me another week. Devastated, apparently, if you're curious. In fact, the only word you don't seem to abbreviate there is abbreviate. Yeah, because that would be abo, and you have issues with that, so... <laughs> yeah, that joke going a bit better here than it did in Australia, I must add up. <laughs> so actually, I will finish now. I, I had someone come up to me afterwards in the show in Australia and said, Mate, I thought it would be very funny, uh, but that little bit you did there was a little bit racist. And ladies and gentlemen, when you get called racist by an Australian, uh, <laughs> there is a large part of you goes, just how racist was I? I mean, I tell you what, right? I, I don't believe British people are racist. I've travelled the world. I believe we're bigoted. And there's a huge difference, okay, right? <laughs> we don't actually have any enthusiastic hatred. What we have is a massive superiority complex, right? <laughs> we are happy to let people into our country, settle down with a job, so long as they realise we're so much better than you. That is... <laughs> 
what it means to be British. We are the only country in the world where you'll hear someone say, oh, I quite fancy a Chinese, and the sentence ends there. In any other nationality, it is a Chinese something. But as far as we're concerned, 1.3 billion people, the world's largest manufacturing base, five and a half thousand years of culture, but for us, that is a bit of sweet and sour chicken in a foil tray. <laughs> oh. yeah. We... We are genuinely the only country in the world where you overhear two blokes going, see that girl, asked her out for a Chinese. She wanted an Indian. We went Mexican in the end and uh, <laughs> she just got the Swede and then we got the Czech and she went Dutch and that was nice and uh, still a bit hungry so he stopped off the Pakistani. She had a Turkish delight, I had a Danish, then back to mine for a drink, bottle of Italian, two scotches and they lit up a Cuban and uh, <laughs> she fancied one. I thought if she smokes, why not a little bit of Moroccan? Well, she was up for that. In that case, why not crack out the Colombian? Bang! <laughs> That did the trick. Suddenly we're kissing bitter French, Roman hands, Russian fingers. Got a glimpse of a Brazilian and she stops dead. Wouldn't even give it a yank. I don't know. <laughs> I'm in Stephen Bart, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much. Good night. Cheers. <laughs>